According to the Times, which obtained a copy of the memoir, quote, when Mr. Esper raised various objections, Mr. Trump said, we could just shoot some Patriot missiles and take oh out the labs God. quietly, adding, no one would know it was us. Mr. Trump said he would just say the United States had not conducted the strike, Mr. Esper recounts, writing, he would have thought it was a joke had he not been staring Mr. Trump in the face. The Times reports, Trump also asked Secretary Esper if the military could put 10,000 active duty troops on the streets of Washington after protests and riots erupted in the wake of the killing of George Floyd by police in Minneapolis. Referring to the demonstrators, former President Trump reportedly asked Esper, quote, can't you just shoot them? Esper reportedly described Trump as a, quote, unprincipled person who, given his self-interest, should not be in the position of public service. You'll remember Esper was fired by Trump just days after the 2020 presidential election was called in favor of Joe Biden. We've reached out to former President Trump's team for comment. NBC News has not yet seen a copy of Esper's book. Secretary Esper will be our guest on Morning Joe next Tuesday. Um, Mike Barnacle, so these are fascinating, Please. perhaps unsurprising revelations, but it joins the list of former Trump administration officials who sort of found Jesus when the book deal comes. Yeah, I mean, here's Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense, who sits with the President of the United States, who just basically proves by his utterances to Mark Esper, is quoted in Mr. Esper's book, that he is mentally unstable. What does Mark Esper do as Secretary of Defense? He goes back and shuts up about it until Random House or whatever the publisher was hands him a check. Oh, I got a good story for you. Please, just stop it. These people ought to be banned from coming on and promoting these books. <laughs> well, we have a lot on two yeah, yeah. about that. <laughs> Starting Wednesday, yes. yes. What do you think, Richard? Look, uh, as a former administration official, uh, you know, I've worked for four presidents, there's certain things you have to keep quiet. That's part of the deal of when you go into administration. But when you see stuff that clearly is beyond the pale, against the law and so forth, you've got the duty, one, to push back privately. And if it's going to go ahead all the same, that's when you, that's, that's why you know, people should resign. They should resign, resign in principle and explain it. And to simply sit on things that are clearly unacceptable, that presidents or you know, officials ought not to be doing, I think yeah, Mike's right. It raises fundamental questions questions about whether people have met their obligations. They don't work at the end of the day for the president as the person. They work for us. Now, there is the argument, Mika, that we'll just put out there, and we look forward to talking to Secretary Esper on Tuesday about all this, <laughs> that these men like General Milley, uh, like various secretaries of, of various cabinets, um, if I leave, look who's behind me, that they had some duty to serve right. as a guardrail or a barrier to these things. It might, the next guy might say, yeah, Donald Trump, you can launch missiles into Mexico and pretend it's not us. I think it's impossible to understand what it was like to be in the shoes of someone who was working directly under President Trump. But Carol Lee, there are now countless stories of people coming out of that White House with even worse revelations than the ones we saw out loud. You know, the, the president didn't have much of a filter at the time and said the most inane, stupid and dangerous things right on the world stage. I think stunning the media and desensitizing uh, his constituents to what our values are. I mean, this is a man who spoke openly about shaking down Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, for dirt on Joe Biden. So I, I do kind of, I'm kind of with Mike Barnacle. I kind of wish somebody would have spoken out in real time. Yeah, what's really interesting about this, Mika, is it echoes what former National Security Advisor John Bolton wrote. And mm -hmm. what you, in the sense that the overarching theme, according to the New York Times story in Esper's book, is that it was all about for former President Trump's reelection, that everything was political, that his decisions were motivated by his own standing politically and his ambitions. And that's the lens through which we've seen a number of these stories be told through, is that that was the motivating factor. What's also striking is that, like John Bolton, Secretary Esper was at the forefront of some of the most serious decisions and things that were going on in any administration. He was the Secretary of Defense and the way that he describes the president wanting to use the military and some of the president's aides, apparently, according to the New York Times story on the book, including Steve Miller sending 250,000 U.S. troops down to the border, things like that. 
What is also striking about this is that Jesper talks about, to everyone's point, he talks about that he thought about resigning. And in fact, we reported while he was still secretary that he had written a letter, a resignation letter that he would keep in, around just in case. And he says the reason that he stayed is because President Trump was surrounded by yes men. Well, Esper's nickname, on, particularly on the Hill, was Yesper because he was seen as somebody who just said yes mm. to the president and didn't stand up to mm. the president. And so part of what you're seeing here is, and we've seen these before, as everyone's noted, is this sort of reputation laundering book. And we'll see if, if it works. But the stories in here setting aside the motivations and what Esper kept to himself are really striking.